I do it and you are with me. I call that the power of proximity. There's great power when people come together and spend some time together. And especially if we spend some time together on the purpose of me equipping you to succeed in this business. And so now you're with me and you're watching me as I recruit. You're watching me as I make presentations. You're watching me. I, 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 leadership is visual. It's visual. 89% of everything you and I know in life, we learn visually through our eyes. 10% through our ears and 1% through the other senses. Leadership is highly visual. People do what people see. They always have, they always will. So stage two is I do it and you're with me, you're watching me, you're observing. And by the way, when I'm finished doing it, we go out, you ask questions, you follow me and I say, well, here's why I did that. We have, we have some interaction where I'm now teaching you off of the questions you're asked as you visually watch me. And I visually become your model I, I visually become your example until I feel that you really are starting to catch on how this works. Then there comes a time I go to stage three. I, I now hand the baton off of you and you do it and I'm with you. We're still close, we're still together, but now instead of me leading the presentation, you're leading the presentation. And I become your coach now, I'm watching you. And after every session, we get together maybe for 15 minutes, a cup of coffee. And I say, now, when you made that presentation, let me give you two things that'll help you make a better presentation. And I tweak you and I, I coach you. That, that, that's an important part of the equipment. So I do it, I do it, you're with me. You do it, I'm with you. Stage four is you do it. There comes a time when I say, you're ready. You don't need me anymore. You understand it, you're good at it. You're going to recruit people because of it. You're going to be able to build a team. And I, I release you. You're, now we're not, we're not to get you, you. Now you do it. Now here's the key. Do not miss this because this is what's so important. Here's the key. Most people stop equipping at that stage. They say, wow, I, you know, boy, I just, I, I just, I just, I just equip Mary. My gosh, look at her. Look how good she's doing. There's a stage five where all the magic, stage, stage five is the magic. Stage five, I mean, I wish I had an hour to teach stage five. Stage five is where it happens. Stage five is, is the magic. Don't, do not miss this. This is huge. Here we go. Stage five is you do it and someone is with you. In other words, you have never equipped somebody until the person you have equipped is equipping somebody. That's where the multiplication, if you stop at stage four, you add. If you go through from stage five, you multiply. The secret sauce of equipping is stage five. In 19 years, I started with three people. And in 19 years, we trained six million leaders in every country of the world. How do we do that? We, how do we do that? We did it because we understand. We understand stage five. We understand that I've never equipped you until you're equipping somebody. In fact, when I get ready to equip you, we have an understanding on the front end. I'll sit down with you and say, okay, we're ready. Maybe we're going to be spending a couple months doing the equipping here. I'm going to equip you. But here's what I want you to understand. When I'm done with you, you equip somebody. In fact, what I do is I ask them, who are you going to equip when I'm done with you? Because I want not only children, I want grandchildren. Woo! And I want great-grandchildren. And I want great-great-grandchildren. I want that constantly to be working and multiplying. Okay. okay, so the E stands for equipping, the L stands for leadership, the C stands for communication. Somebody's listening that this clock's been on three minutes and 22 seconds for the last five minutes. Leadership app that you're getting 
always will be doing clear. Every week you get clear. Something on communication, something on leadership, something on equipping. The letter A is for attitude. How you and I think. Attitude is perspective. How I view things is how I do things. That's a fact. And so therefore, it's important to help people think correctly. And I want to say two things about attitude quickly. Number one is that attitude isn't everything, but it's the main thing. I, I, want, to, I want to have honesty with you. I, I've got, I'm, I'm your friend. My name's John. And you have to understand, I want, I want to be honest with you, because there are motivational speakers that will tell you, I, I hear them all the time, they'll go out and they'll say, um, they'll say, you know, attitude's everything. And whenever I hear them say attitude's everything, I want to say, no, no, my name's John, I'm your friend, it's not everything. A attitude can never replace confidence. In, in other words, if you're incompetent, your attitude isn't enough. If you're incompetent, you're not going to build a business. You've got to be, you've got to be good in your skill set. Attitude won't make up for a lack of skills. Are you with me? So, so, so don't, don't get lazy and say, well, I don't really know the business well, but I've got a great attitude. You see, if you have a great attitude, but you're incompetent, the good news is when you're fired, you'll be happy. <laughs> You'll go around and say, oh my gosh, I freed up my schedule, oh my gosh, I got all, I got all kind of freedom. <laughs> Attitude cannot replace experience. Never has, it never will. There are certain things you just have to experience and learn in life to just get, just to get better. So, so what I want you to understand is attitude isn't everything. And so, so don't, don't, don't go, don't go so far with this. I mean, I mean, I, you know, we, we're so big on this stuff. <coughs> I mean, we write songs on it. I mean, we write songs, you know, oh. I believe I can fly. I can fly. <laughs> John, I'm your friend. You, you can't fly. I, I don't, no matter how long the runway, I don't care. No matter how long the runway, flap those arms all you want to, you ain't getting up in the air. You can't fly. Okay. It's okay. It's all right. Again, back to my ballet dance. If I told you I would, I believed I could be the, a world-renowned ballet dancer. You just look at me and say, the man's delusional. <laughs> Belief is so essential. Belief is in everything. You have to put with a great attitude, which is so important in your life. You have to, with a great attitude, apply yourself and develop your skill set. So many people, when they get on the attitude kick, I watch them and they kind of go around and they're happy but they're never successful. And it's because they get lazy and they're undisciplined and they, they want to smile, but they don't want to work. They don't want to study. They don't want to prepare. They don't want to pay a price. The other thing I want to say about attitude is that your attitude is a choice. It's a choice. This is amazing. You get to choose your attitude. Something's so important in your life and you can choose it. Attitude is a choice. That's why, by the way, when people have a bad attitude, I never pay any attention to them. You know, you know sometimes when people have a bad attitude, we all go over there and we say, oh, okay, oh, come on, it's going to be okay. Let them get you, you're okay. We love you. Let's all, let's hold hands, let's sing Kumbaya. It's okay. No, if you've got a bad attitude, I don't even want to be around you. I don't even, I try to run from you as fast as I can. Because can I tell you something? You chose that attitude. You're totally responsible for it. I'm not responsible for it at all. Margaret and I were doing a seminar many, many years ago. 
in a Q&A, somebody asked her, she said, does John make you happy? I thought, oh, that's a great question because I think I'm an amazing husband. And, and, and Margaret looked right back at the, the lady that asked it and she just, I mean, just quickly, she said, no, she said, John doesn't make me happy. And it got real quiet. Everybody got, oh my God. <laughs> and, and I looked at her, and I, you know, I, I said, honey, sweetheart, hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Explain what you mean. <laughs> Have you ever asked someone to explain something so they explain something? And after they explain something, you wish you would have never asked them <laughs> to explain something. Because when I asked her to explain it, she said, well, sure, I'll do that. She looked at the glaze and I realized in the first six months of our marriage, he would never make me happy. Now, I don't know if you have the gift of discernment, but we're going downhill very quickly. <laughs> and then she said, because the first six months of our marriage, that's what I expected him to do, make me happy. I was teaching school. He was in ministry. I'd come home from school and say, we'll have dinner tonight. And he'd call me and say, honey, I'm at the hospital. Somebody got hurt. I'm not going to be able to be for dinner. I had a great, she said, I kept saying, he'll make me happy. He'll make me happy. She said, about six months of marriage, one day I awakened and I said to myself, my husband will not make me happy. I'm the only person in this world that can make me happy. And then she said, and then she said, and the day I decided to make me happy, he has added immeasurably to my happiness. The attitude of choice. The letter R in the word clear is all about relationships. It's all about relationships. Probably of all the quotes that I've known for, the one I'm best known for may be this one. People do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. It's all about people. Stanford Research says 89, no, no, I'm sorry, 87% of your success is people knowledge. 13% of your success is product knowledge. You're in the people business here. I know you do insurance. I got it. I got it. But you're not in the insurance. You're in the people business. That's right. Pe you're the pe hey, people won't go along with you if they can't get along with you. So there's nothing, nothing probably more important than your ability to love people, care for people, have good relationships with people, serve people intentionally add value to them. So as I wrap it up today, I want to again say, say thank you for inviting me here. You, organization it's rising and for all of you I must honestly say you're the best crowd I've talked to today and always remember will you remember this for me yes, yes, sir. yes. my name is John Oh, it's just not you personally. 
first? No, nah, I'm just <laughs> My name's Sean. What's your name? My name's Erica Aguilar. Erica, nice, yes, nice, 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 nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Joshua 1, 9.